Hi everybody, hope you're doing marvelously well. So Acoustica, an Italian company who, this is the first time we've actually tried their plugins, has created a reverb. It's actually a set of 77 different spaces and 120 different variations. What is interesting about this is they've gone all over beautiful parts of Italy and, and recreated all of these different rooms. This is definitely gonna be something for those who want to utilize recreating a space really, really well, putting your instruments, your vocals, everything in a space. So before we go on, of course, as ever, you can win one of three copies of the plugin. So please look down below. There will be a link to enter to win one of three copies. Thank you, Acoustica, for letting us give those away. Okay, so let's start by having a look around. Now, on the top left-hand side here, we have spaces, so we can choose a space. Now, from what I can tell, if I go randomly and go warehouse, what happens is if I go to where it says LST, it loads all of the variations up there. So you can get to it quicker and easier. I like that idea. They have a lot of stuff. So we've got a club, you've got far, medium, you see it gets closer to illustrate it, near, cave. Okay, so it's like a brick, a brick room. I suppose, like a cave, almost looks like a, a cellar. Domestic, so obviously house, bathroom. What I love about this, of course, if any of you are fans of Italy, you know, absolutely incredible country and obviously so much history and architecture, you can go to places like this, where we have a church here. It's just amazing. So you can see what they've done. They've gone out and they've modeled a lot of different places. Let's have a quick look down here. So now we're on their page where it says about silver. Here we go. So there's a church here in Italy it says Romanesque Church of Santa Maria. Uh, takes its name from the earliest forest. You've got Sphere Studio. It is principally designed for acoustic music, but it's versatile and welcomes all genres. I like this. I love the idea of, you know, getting a plugin made by a company in a particular country and they use all of their local resources. So that's pretty cool. So what I want to use on this track, I'll, let's listen to it for a second. It's the Katie In Your Eyes. Love, I get so lost sometimes. Such a great singer. We don't need any auto-tune or anything on it. It's very organic, of course. We've got Blair playing like an open sounding drums. You know, and I wonder with a track like this, whether we should find a space and put the acoustic in it, the vocal in it, and the drums in it. With that in mind, let's go to a club. Let's go to a medium. Here we go. And we'll just solo the vocal first of all, just for schnitz and schniggles and have a listen. I get so lost. So we have a direct level here. I'm going to bring it all the way down and an uh, output reverb level. I get so lost sometimes. Days pass and this emptiness fills my heart. All right, let's try the depth control. So what I've done is I cranked the output reverb level. I've taken the direct signal off because this is on a separate auxiliary, a separate subgroup. You can, of course, put it directly onto the vocal. I tend not to do that. And especially in this instance where if we get a reverb we like on the vocal, we're gonna try and feed everything else into it to see, you know, to make it feel like it's in a room. So we've got early reflections level here and late, late levels here as well. Now, our guess is, is that this perfection control here is literally how efficient it's running. Basically, how much CPU is it going to use? So let's have a quick look. Okay, so here's our total CPU. It's jumping around. Well, let's press play and see what it does. Okay, now. Love. I get so lost sometimes. Day. So I bypassed about about. And this emptiness fills my. So dancing around about 20, 
So it's adding about 15% to our CPU usage, which is not unheard of, you know, on a really good sounding reverb. Let's crank the perfection. Love. On both the early and the late. I get so lost sometimes. I'm gonna go to the default setting. Resumes about halfway. Love. I get so lost. So in the default place, it's adding about 15% to our CPU. You know, every computer's gonna be different depending on how modern the computer is, how good the processing is. Now, like I said, Acoustica are coming in here to create a very high level, high quality reverb, which would be used for these kinds of mixes. Something where you have really beautiful, open sounding recordings, orchestral stuff. When you're doing post-production sound and you're trying to create a really unique space. Let's get a little bit bigger on the room. Let's see what this... Oh, I like this. Love. Oh! I get so lost sometimes Days pass And this emptiness fills my heart When I want to run away I drive off in my car Pretty amazing. I don't know how they recorded that, but it's fantastic. And you can really hear stereo imagery. If you look at the visuals there, that's for a preset hit one. Absolutely love it. I don't know if it's the one I'm going to be using on this song, but I love it. So now if I go up to my LST, it's loaded up there. It's large. If I go to room one, not large, what it sounds like. Love. Okay. I get so lost. Bring the depth up. Sometimes days pass, and this emptiness fills my heart. Okay, so I hit the guru button here to see what the heck is going on. So I've got early pre delay, I can change here. I've got late reflection pre delay. I've got time adjustment here. I've got distance plus and minus, so width. Let's try that. Love. I get so lost sometimes. Days pass and this emptiness fills my I'm going to change the late pre-delay. Love. I get so lost sometimes. That's really cool sounding. I'm going to put a lit put a little bit of the acoustic through that as well. Let's find all the drum elements. Three mics on the drums. Love. I'm not going to put any on the kick. I don't think I need to, but let's put a little bit on the overheads. Love. I get so lost sometimes. Day. Let's put a little bit of that on the acoustic as well. Love. So now what I'm doing is I'm panning the reverb to the other side. Let's see how it works in the stereo image. Oh wow, so it actually acts like a split mono, which is pretty fantastic. Sometimes I have to specifically choose reverbs as split monos. And what I mean by that is that then I can pan to the left or to the right entirely, or a percentage. Now you might say, what do you mean? Well, on a lot of reverbs that are stereo, if I pan entirely to one side, there's still a bleed on the other side. 
Obviously, of course there would be, because you can't be in a room and clap your hand on one side of the room and not expect that reverberation to go all the way over to the other side. But it does get a little frustrating when you're trying to forcibly make you know, a dry signal be on this side and a reverberation on the other. So what's nice about this is it's allowing me to do that so I can really control what I send there. Definitely smart. If it does use a lot of CPU, make sure that you could get away with only using a couple of instances of it. Meaning, what I can do in this instance is I can have the vocal go down the center and fill the whole room. I can have the acoustic on one side and only have its reverb on the other, all in the same plugin. Days pass And this emptiness fills my heart When I want to I'm going to go to the end here. We've got the um, background vocals and they've, they've got the same reverb being sent to it. In your eyes, in your eyes. Let's bring it down. In your eyes. Make it a little closer. In your eyes, in your eyes, in your eyes. So what I'm going to do now is because those backgrounds are panned around quite a lot, is I'm actually going to flip the left and the right. So the my left hand send is now on the right and my right is on the left, meaning I can get more of the vocal on one side and it's reverb on the other, and then that other vocal on that side and it's reverb on the opposite side. In your eyes, in your eyes, in your eyes, in your eyes. In your eyes, in your eyes. Oh, I see the light, I see the eyes. And I wanna be there in your eyes. I wanna touch the light, the heat I see in your eyes. In your Let's have a listen to the second verse going into that chorus with and without the reverb. Let's see what we've done with it. So here is without the silver. I reach out from inside. Mm -hmm. In your eyes, light the heat in your eyes. I am complete in your eyes. And let's listen to it with the reverb, with silver on. I reach out from inside. A little less on the lead vocal. Nice. So definitely achieving what they're after. Um, I did like the kind of fun of going a little nutty on it when we went to the largest sound. Um, just for snitch and sniggles, let's do that. Let's go room too large and see how that sounds. I reach out from inside. Bring up the send. Try the panning. Let's try some silliness. I know it says religious. What's the largest thing we have here? 
Uh, I don't know if this is. Let's go to this. This is quite a lot larger. See what happens. When I see the heat. I want to be there complete. I want to touch the let the heat I see in your eyes. I'm hitting the perfection. In Max your out. Eyes. Longest sound. In your eyes. So I went to one and a half seconds, I maxed the perfection on both sides. We didn't crash. I want to go to the largest of all of them to see how big they've gone. That is a beautiful looking church. I don't know where that is, but I want to go there. It's gorgeous. And I see the heat. I want to be there complete. It's so simple. It looks like something from the 1300s. Like, absolutely gorgeous. And I see the heat. I want to be there complete. So what we have here is time. And what it is, as you can see, it goes down to 0.3 times and 1.5 times. So it's not seconds. So let's check out what we think the time is. And I see the heat. About three and a half seconds. So one and a half times, probably close to five seconds, roughly. And I see the heat. Mm, sounded a little bit closer to like four. Um, so maybe it was like, you know, round about just over four. Anyway, either way, it's quite a nice idea. So they're preserving the actual sound of the room. They're not like going crazy and, and reinventing the wheel. They're keeping the integrity of the original space. But here's point three. Let's have a listen. And I see the heat. It's nice. Nice. And I see the heat. In your eyes. Back in. In your eyes. In your eyes. So as I said earlier, this is not going to be just another reverb that you use on your snare. There's plenty of good, inexpensive, comes free in your DAW reverbs. They're obviously 100% aiming this at people that don't mind spending enough to compete with the big you know, the Altiverb, it's been around for a long time. It's a great reverb. I, I still use it. Many people do. It's that kind of place. They've gone out and they've modeled all of these different spaces, and that's where they are aiming at. Let's go to the opera and theater far, just for the heck of it. See how big this is. And I see the heat. I want oh, wow. be there complete. I want to touch the let the heat Ooh, I, like I this see a lot. in your eyes 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 That's not what I, what I was expecting at all. But I suppose if it's an opera house and a theater, it would have good controlled acoustics. Actually worked really well on that. Public spaces. Oh, wow. Conference hall. Large, far. All right, let's see if this gets silly. And I see the heat. I want to be there. All right, what are we finding so far? We're finding I haven't reached for the EQ. It's unusual. I haven't reached for the EQ, but let's go reach for the EQ. And I see the heat. It's got high passing. I want to be there complete. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the vocal. I'm going to put it on pre. 
send, so it means I can mute the vocal and we're only going to be listening to the reverb. Okay. So it's the high pass. There's a low frequency cut. Mid range cut. Mid range boost. That feels like pure mid range in the 1K ish kind of area. Not as getting as much high as I'd expect, but it's probably not in that room itself. So what they've done here is they've got three versions of the player. The full one we tried, the one without the mid-range, and the one without high and low pass. Unless there's a CPU difference, maybe there is. Maybe the, those, those extra EQs affect the CPU. As it turned out, I didn't go, remember I said earlier, I didn't reach for the EQ. With that many choices of sounds, I'm probably going to just change the reverb quicker than EQing it, unless it's like really bothering me. But to be really blunt, if something really bothers me at a specific frequency and I've got fixed EQ, I'll just open up a full, you know, incredibly variable EQ and go in and find the frequency that bothers me and pull it out. Sometimes it's the source that causes the problem. You know, you've got something raspy, something weird going on in the vocal, which gets amplified by a room and you're better off EQing it out of the source anyway. Yeah, and I didn't find excessive low end in any of the so far. That's not to say that some of these emulations might not have a little bit of excessive low end. But yeah, so what you've got is you've got the silver A pack. I'll go back to it and look to it here. Is volume A, it says silver A includes 77 physical spaces from many different locations for a total of more than 120 different emulations divided in several categories. Club, religious, Opera and theater, studio and scoring, public spaces, miscellaneous, or music miscellaneous, sorry, post miscellaneous, and domestic. Domestic would be like houses and things like that. And the players are free. So if you want to enter to win one of three copies of the volume A, and obviously the free player, don't forget to go and click on the link down below to enter. If you've used Silver, let us know how you got on. We only had one instance open. I suppose just for schnitch and sniggles, we're going to risk it. We're going to open a second one. I'm going to put it directly on, I'm gonna, on the overhead track. I'm going to go for the light. I'm going to select Cave Near. Turn the direct level down. A thousand search in your eyes, the resolution in your eyes, for all the fruitless. Okay, we've got two instances going. We were looking earlier at system usage. Let's see what it does now. In your eyes, the light the heat in your eyes. I am complete in your eyes. It's dancing around about 40 to 50% CPU usage with all of the plugins that we're already using plus two of these. I think we had about 15% CPU usage without the plugins on. So it looks like it's adding roughly about 15% to our CPU each one. That isn't unheard of with plugins this powerful and complex. You know, when you go out and emulate, you know, sit there and capture the sound of a room with a very, very long decay time, it's gonna be complex. It's not quite the same as, uh, you know, triggering some kind of artificial verb. But honestly, two instances like this isn't bad. I think I could probably still open up. I've got a trashy drum sound here. I'm going to do it. I'm going to open up a third one because I know this has been a discussion and everybody wants to know how many of these instances can we use. Okay, so I'm going to go near club. Oh, no, no. I'm going to go to domestic. I'm going to go to bedroom. There's only one setting for the bedroom. So here's bedroom. <laughs> Look at that little bedroom. In your eyes, the light, the heat in your eyes. I am complete in your eyes. CPU. I see the door in your eyes. To a thousand church in your eyes. The resolution. Okay, so this isn't growing exponentially. Even though there's now three instances on it, it's still... It's only a couple of percent above where it was at before. 
So I wonder if there's some kind of sharing going on because there was a definitely like a 15% increase when we had one on, and then it's going up a little bit with the second, but now with the third one, it hasn't increased as much. So maybe there is some sharing of resources when you have multiple plugins on. But the, the fact that we have three of these reverbs going on a mix is, is pretty darn good. You know, it, it's going to be a, 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 a very rainy day in a, in a very hot place that uh, before I need more than three of this level of reverb on a mix. I mean, typically, I use multiple reverbs. I'll have one on a snare. Um, sometimes, often, we create like a reverb for the whole of the drum kit. So the snare has maybe its own impactful reverb, but then we have like a little bit of ambience on the whole kit so that it, it feels like it's all in one place with that little extra on the snare. Then we'll probably have one, two, maximum three on a vocal. Usually one or two, we'll have a tiled room and then like a large plate. So we're up to about four, but the reverb I use on the snare, for instance, is not, it's not going to be um, this. It's going to be free with my, with my DAW or something a lot less powerful. I think this is going to be for vocals and especially instruments that you want to group together and keep in one space. Sounds good. I like it. I like it. It looks like they put a lot of love into it. Hey, I'm a big fan of Italy anyway, so I have no problem looking at beautiful churches and, you know, theatres and et cetera from Italy. Don't forget, enter down below. You have a chance to win one of, one of three copies of this. Have a marvellous time recording and mixing, and we'll speak to you all again. So long, farewell, a au revoir, adios, adios, tschüss, goodbye.